Hey there, everybody. Uh, hopefully you're all here and uh, you're able to see and hear me okay. Uh, John here, and it is just a, uh, you know, Friday night in lockdown, so not going anywhere, not doing anything. So I thought tonight uh, Anne needs some bells. Uh, so I decided that I will help Anne out and play a little bit of Animal Crossing. So I'll give you a little bit of a insight on this. So Anne... Um, Anne is the one who plays Animal Crossing. It's, it's a fun little game. It is an interesting little game. But every once in a while, see, Anne does all the important things, and then I do the grunt work for her. So I go around, and uh, I collect all the resources she needs. I do the things she needs to do to make money for her character. So that is what we're doing. So, hey, guys. Hello. Are, are you guys all able to hear me okay? Are you guys able to just jump into the comment section and let me know that you're able to hear me all right? Because uh, I don't know if uh, this is any good. Uh, Gershon Monroy is just writing his Animal Crossing good. You know what? It's it's deceptively it's deceptively addicting, and it's it's a nice relaxing little game. But everybody says you're able to hear me okay. So yeah, first thing I want to do, the guys, is I want to give you a little bit of a tour around um, Anne's house for those of you who play. And I'm gonna take you around here. So Anne has got this whole upper part of the island all to herself. She built her house up here. And there's her money trees is over here. She made a moon. Yes, she made a moon. Uh, then she put up this fence and she put up a pool. And basically she made it so this entire area is all her like estate, which is actually kind of cool uh, that she does that. So anyway, so I'm here today. I'm going to try to collect a whole bunch of wood for her. I'm going to try to construct a bunch of tables because they're being purchase for twice their price and then I'm gonna go visit some other islands see if I can land some of the special islands uh, tonight for her so that's what I'm gonna to do today guys and uh, you're along with me and you can send in super chats if you like of course actually there's already a few in here so let me get to a couple of these uh, Adam Henson wrote in uh, probably won't happen but now that Disney owns Fox I'm hoping for mr. sinister in an MCU movie and Hulk versus juggernaut for me is a must so here's hoping don't hold your breath for Hulk versus juggernaut um, and the reason I would say don't hold hold your breath for Hulk versus Juggernaut is because Mark Ruffalo, we talked about this on the John Campus show the other day, uh, Mark Ruffalo has already come out and said that uh, there are no currently no plans for future, uh, for Hulk and anything upcoming. Um, oh, is that a big fish? That's a big fish. I'm going to see if I can catch that. I'm not really worried about fish right now, but that is a big one. Let's see. That's what she said. Ha, 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 ha. Come on. There we go. It's a useless fish. A useless fish, so I'm going to throw this one back. Um, yeah, so anyway, Mark Ruffalo was talking about it, and he said there are no plans right now for another Hulk. They said there's some talks, he said, about... Um, there are some talks about Hulk being in... Um, in the She-Hulk movie, I should probably gather these up too. Oh, they'll, they'll, you know what? They'll fall down when I chop the tree. There are some talks about Hulk being in She-Hulk, but he said that's not even finalized. They're not even sure that's going to happen. Um, I know a lot of people got very excited when they said Hulk was going to be in She-Hulk, but at, I mean, right now, according to um, Mark Ruffalo, they're not even sure that's going to happen at all. Okay. These apples are actually worth a lot on this island. So, as far as Mark Ruffalo is concerned, there's nothing for Hulk coming up. And, you know, Kevin Feige has said he's got the next five years planned. Well, now that was over a year ago, so now he's got the next four years planned. But if he's got all this planned and Mark Ruffalo doesn't know about any plans for Hulk, it kind of seems, unfortunately to me, that that looks like we shouldn't hold our breath for Hulk. But it would be cool to see Hulk versus... Juggernaut, I'm actually kind of holding out hope. And Mr. Sinister obviously would always be cool. Mr. Sinister would be a tremendous on-screen villain. I'd love to see that. But, um, yeah, as far as Hulk goes, we shouldn't hold our breath. Okay, what else we got in here? We've got uh, Chris Warden writes, I know I'm late on this, but I just want to say R.I.P. Howard Finkel. Yeah, the great announcer, the greatest announcer in pro uh, wrestling history. Yeah, I, I was so sad when I read that the other day. Because, you know, I grew up listening to the Fink. Like, I grew up watching wrestling. And, you know, back in the Hogan days and everything, and when I was a kid, I mean, that was Howard Finkel, the voice of Howard Finkel, man. And I was really sad to hear that he had passed away. 
Um, and he wasn't even that... He was pretty young still. Like, he, I think he was in his 60s. So, I mean, he was still fairly young. And so, I, I haven't... Oh, crap. Ah, god damn it. Stupid wasps. Ah, I should have been careful. Oh, a second. I gotta take some medicine to get my face uneffed up. Do I have any medicine? Yes, I do have some medicine. Okay. Um, see, Anne always tells me, Anne always tells me, make sure you have the, um, make sure you have the net on you when you first strike the tree. Oops. So you can catch the hornets so the hornets don't eat you. But I never listen. Uh, anyway, yeah, the passing of Howard Finkel was very, very sad. Uh, let's see what else was in here. Uh, Jeff Kang writes, Do you think physical video games will die like Blu-rays? I hope not, because I like to trade in games at GameStop to save money. That's one of the... That is... Listen, I'll tell you right now. That's the best thing about physical games. The best thing about physical games is that you can trade them in. Or, or trade them or whatever. Uh, that's the best part about them. But... Yeah, they're going away. They're dying. As a matter of fact, like, I... Most people I know who buy video games now just download them digitally. Um, like, even that's now. Most people just... It's just too convenient. You just hop on the system and you order your game and you buy the game. And it's just... And there you have it. You don't have to go to a GameStop or you don't have to go to a store to get it. It's just there and you've got it. So, yes. And I, I actually think physical games will be gone before physical movies are gone. I think they're going to be gone sooner rather than later because video game players, I find gamers are a little bit more technologically up on things. Did I already get that tree? I did. Uh, video game players are even more on embracing technology than most people are. And uh, therefore, while, hey, listen, we're all very nostalgic about, you know, having the video game discs. I think video game players are going to be even more quick to adapt to the digital realities. Um, so yeah, and I think that's nothing but a good thing. Now, you're right. Being able to trade in games is a great notion, but the convenience of... You don't even have to drive to GameStop to get your game. You can just hop on, download it, and away you go, and you got it. So I do think, uh, I think gamers are going to adopt to that pretty quick. Uh, okay, what else we got in here? Uh, the Wakandan Forever, uh, wrote in, um... Hey, John, first time Super Chat. What's your favorite horror character? Mine is Chucky. Yeah, a lot of people love Chucky. A lot of people love Chucky. I, I'm not so much a Chucky guy. I like the first Child's Play movie, the first one. I don't like any of the other ones all that much, to be honest. Although I thought the newest one, the remake they just did with Mark Hamill doing the voice of Chucky, I actually thought that was pretty cool. I did enjoy that one. I thought that one was fun. Okay, how do I get down from here? Now let's grab my ladder. I actually thought the newest Chucky was was kind of fun. I did. It was very very different, but like I said, I had I had some fun with it. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm not a Chucky guy. I'm not a Chucky guy uh, all that much. I I would say because my favorite horror film of all time is An American Werewolf in London, so I will have to kind of stick on that theme and say David. David from American Werewolf in London is my favorite character in horror, both as the regular guy and as the werewolf. Um, that's, yeah, that's my favorite dude. Now, some of you might be wondering, why am I spending all this time running around gathering wood? The reason I'm going around gathering wood is because every day there's an item you can make. There's a different item you can make every single day that the shop buys for double the price. So today... Oh, Bust my axe. I need to make a new one. So today, that special item is a wood table. And the ingredients I need for a wood table are is just wood. I just need wood. And so I'm going around collecting as much wood as I can. Then once I gather up as much wood as I can, I will uh, then go and start crafting... Oops. I'll go start... Ah. I will go start crafting all those tables so I can sell them to make Anne as much money as she can. Because right now, that's what I'm here to do, is just to get Anne as much money as I uh, possibly can. So, yes, David from American World from London. That would be... Now, if I had to pick my favorite classic horror character, um, 
I'd probably go Dracula. Dracula is probably my favorite for the classic horror horror motif. So that's that's what I would say for that. All right, uh, let's see. James Reinerstone says Zeph Flirton House. I've had like two people write that into me, and I have no idea what that is. Um, uh, James Ransom writes, John, aren't you just thrilled that Christian's nonsense is spilling over to your channel? So I'm guessing that that Zeph Flirton thing is a Christian thing. I'm just guessing from your comment. I have no idea. I do know that Christian recently shaved his head, and I meant to call him today to talk to him about that, just to see what brought that on. Um, ooh, maybe I should put my axe away, and I will talk to this person for Anne. Um... I don't. That must have been something that Anne did uh, when I was not here. One oh, second. Woohoo! Little bonus. Um, yeah. So, I, other than that, I have no idea what we're talking about. All right. Uh, Leech reactions rights. Have you ever played Fallout? Uh, if not, you should try. I have played around with Fallout a little bit. I'm trying to remember which one it was that I played. Um, I can't remember which one, but I have played some Fallout. And I was actually just thinking about... A friend of mine recommended that I pick up Fallout 4 again. And uh, play some Fallout 4. And I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to load up uh, Fallout 4 at some point. Alright, I'll see how many, much wood I can get out of these trees here. Right now. But yeah, I, I know Dennis, uh, my friend Dennis, if you guys know Dennis then, uh, Dennis loves Fallout. So I I think I'll have to give it a shot. Actually, you know what I just reinstalled today? Because I never really played it heavily. I just played it a little bit and then kind of got off it. Um, I just reinstalled uh, Witcher 3 today. I got on my Steam account. I was on my Steam account for something else, I can't remember. And I thought, oh yeah, I've got Witcher 3. I might as well reinstall it and uh, play a little bit of Witcher 3. So I think in the next couple of days, I'm going to play a little Witcher 3 because I haven't touched that since... Honestly, the last time I played Witcher 3, I played it with John Schnepp. Uh, that's the last time I played Witcher 3. So that that was a while ago. Uh, let's see here. Man, I don't like chopping trees when it's all congested like this. Oh, that one is already gone. Okay. See, I don't need hardwood. I need regular wood. Um, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Leech. Okay. Chris, 24M writes, I agree with you when you said X-Men Days of Future Past is better than Avengers Endgame. <coughs> it all depends. Like, I, Avengers Endgame has better moments in it than X-Men Days of Future Past does. Like, there's nothing in X-Men Days of Future Past as a moment that can equal, say, portals. Right? There's nothing in X-Men Days of Future Past as, that has moments that are, like, that equal what you get in the portal scene, right? I just think overall as a film, as a film overall, yes, I do believe, um, I find Days of Future Past overall as a coherent film is a better film overall. But, I mean, again, that's not to take away anything from the portal scene or anything like that because... There's nothing in Endgame that, or uh, Days of Future Past that touches that moment. Because that, that's some of the best moments in, like, favorite moments in movies. I mean, is that portal scene and the various things that happens in the portal scene? It's hard to beat, man. It's hard to beat. But listen, I'm telling you, people today still sleep on X-Men Days of Future Past and forget how good that movie is. That movie is freaking awesome. Like, everything from concept to execution. Everything from concept to execution about X-Men Days of Future Past is absolutely freaking brilliant. I love that movie. Uh, all right, thanks a lot for that, man. All right, Dan Ketchum writes in, I'd love to see a remake of Remo Williams. You're not alone in that, Dan. And listen, there was talk. I remember back in AMC Movie Talk days. Back in the AMC Movie Talk days. Aw, oh, damn it. Ah, uh, <sighs> frickin', frickin', frickin'. Apparently, if you can get inside, you can avoid getting stung, but that did not happen for me. Frickin' wasp, man. Frickin' wasps. Well, I'm gonna take this wasp nest, and I'm gonna kill all your family. How's that, wasp? 
You like that? Huh? How you like them apples? I'm gonna kill your family. Cause you stung me. Alright. Uh, let's see. Oops. No, I don't need that. I need a shovel. Okay. Oh, and I busted my shovel. I'll have to pick up another one of those. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, Remo Williams. Okay, first of all, Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins is awesome. They're based on a series of novels called The Destroyer. Um, and the first movie is freaking hilarious with Chun, the uh, Korean master who teaches Remo Williams. It's, I forget the name of the actor, but it's the same actor who is also... Um, Stars with Kevin Bacon and Tremors. Anyway, he's this guy that they have to fake his death so he can become the most secret of secret agents. Uh, and it's awesome. I have always wanted to see them do another Remo Williams. And there was talk a couple of years ago. Um, I remember we did, like I was saying before, we did a story on AMC Movie Talk one day about how one of the studios, and I cannot remember which one, had picked up the rights. Wait, I got to check to see if I have a uh, another shovel. I do not have another shovel, so I need to run back and make another shovel. Um, yeah, so anyway, there was a story that they were going to be doing another one, and or, or doing a reboot of it, and they were even or there was reports at the time they were even early casting. They were in the early stages of casting, and nothing came of it. Nothing came of it. So I am with you, dude. I would love to see another Remo Williams. I would absolutely love that. Okay, hold on a second. I gotta make a shovel here. What do I need? I need... Oh, I need to make a flimsy shovel first, and I need an iron nugget. Okay. So I'll go pick up the iron. Then I will make a flimsy shovel. And then... Then I will make a real shovel. You know, I'm gonna make another one just to be safe. I'm gonna make another one just to be safe. <coughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Dim sum. Um. I think that was the last one. Huh? Oh, Jordan Hurd. I say Jordan Hurd just wrote in. I'm surprised that Disney hasn't acquired Nintendo, a massive IP library that was, uh, as well as giving Disney their own uh, video game company. Well, there's a couple of reasons why you shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> One, Nintendo ain't for sale. Uh, there's that. Uh, so that's a big problem right there. Secondly, Nintendo or Disney is not going to be in the... Um, um, they're not going to be in the purchasing business anytime soon. Uh, remember, they just spent 70 something billion dollars on Fox. So that takes, they spent more than half of their company's liquid worth just to buy Fox. So they are, they're not gonna be in the big acquisitions game uh, for a while. They're gonna be out of the big acquisitions game for a while. But then on top of that, I, I'm not sure that Disney wants to be in the video game making business. I mean, that's the other big problem with that, right? I'm not sure they want to be in that business. Now, I can't remember if I chopped these trees or not. Huh? I missed. How did I miss the tree? I did not chop these trees yet. Okay. Now, the one thing of value that I could see in Disney uh, purchasing, like, say, a Nintendo, is the characters. Like, Mario would be an incredibly valuable character. Um... But, I mean, how much is it worth? Do you buy an entire empire like like Nintendo just to buy one character? Like, is that is that a good use of your finances? Probably not. And I'm not sure Disney wants, like I said, I don't think they want to be in the video game business. So, yeah. A couple of big problems. Nintendo ain't for sale. Disney's not in a position to buy anybody right now. So those are the, those are the big problems with that, unfortunately. Okay. Great. Okay. So those, yeah, those are the big ones. Okay, let's see. All right. Uh, King Noble just wrote in. 
Uh, what did you think about the recent episode of Clone Wars, if you've seen it? I don't watch Clone Wars. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. I watched every single episode of um, the Clone Wars series before Season 7, before this new season. I watched every single episode. It is not for me. I, I did not like Clone Wars. I don't think it's a very good show. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it sucks. I don't think you're crazy if you like it, because a lot of people love it. A lot of people love it. But it uh, it doesn't work for me. So I thought my original plan was not to bother with the new season on Disney+. Plus, But, you know, I thought, you know what? Give it a shot. Who knows? Like, like give it a shot. So I watched the first episode of season seven which is the one with uh, the Bad Bunch. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. So I said, yep, I'm, I'm comfortable with not... I, I'm comfortable with being somebody who doesn't watch Clone Wars. Uh, I gave it a shot. I saw the uh, the uh, the original six seasons. Doesn't work for me, but you can't say I didn't give it a shot, because I did. Uh, but it doesn't really work for me, so I haven't watched the other episodes, and I do not plan on watching the other episodes. So yeah, there's that. Um, let's see here. Okay, uh, Leech Live, or Leech Live Reactions writes, Any more news on National Treasure 3? I remember you making a video about it, but that was before this whole COVID-19. Do you think this will affect anything? Well, it's definitely going to affect it. Like, as far as, there's going to be absolutely no movement on it for a while. You're not going to hear about any movement on a National Treasure 3 for a while. But, I mean, even when the news came out that they were looking at developing it, they were going to hire a screenwriter, or, or did they already hire a screenwriter, or whatever... So they're in development. But again, we've talked about this before. Lots and lots of movies go into development that never actually um, get that never actually get um, made into a movie, right? Lots and lots of films get put into development that never actually get made into a movie. Now, whether that'll happen with National Treasure 3 or whether it actually happens, I don't know. I would like to see them do another one. Uh, but at this point, ooh, a gold nugget! The gold nuggets are worth 10,000. Which is pretty awesome. Anne's going to be very happy. Okay. 10,000 for that gold nugget. That's rare. I think I've only... The whole time I've played this for Anne, I think I've only dug up like four of those. So that's pretty cool that I dug one up there. Um, but listen, anything that brings about the... the um, uh, Renicage... You know, there's the reconnaissance. I call it the Renicage. Anything that brings about the Renicage, like the return of Nicolas Cage to pure prominence, I'm all for. I'm all for anything that brings about the resurgent dominance of Nicolas Cage. Because I am a Nick Cage fan. I am unapologetic about that. I love Nick Cage. Uh, I, I'm not the world's biggest fan of National Treasure, but I like it. And I'd be down to seeing another one. I like these treasure hunter kind of uh, movies and ideas, so why not? I'm down for it. All right, good. So I need the stone. But I wouldn't anticipate... Um, here's what I, my guess is right now. I wouldn't anticipate hearing anything new about either um, the development of National Treasure 3, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect to hear anything about it at least until number 1 the uh, the whole covid crisis is behind us. And then even then, I think it'll be a few months after the covid thing crisis that we can even hope to hear anything because remember, just as they were getting started and putting this whole thing together, that's when everything got locked down. It wasn't long after they announced that they were going to try doing something with the National Treasure 3 that everything got put into lockdown. So really, they've had no opportunity to really make any progress whatsoever. So my guess right now would be it's we're, we're talking minimum. And this is just a guess, but I, my guess is minimum. We're talking six months that even if this movie's going to happen... Oh, she must have chopped these already. Um, that even if the movie's going to happen, that we actually hear anything. So, minimum six months. Because, again, you got to get the COVID thing behind us, and then on top of that, we got to get... Um... Okay, stuff is coming out. Okay. Um, even once that's done, then we got to get another few months, because they're just going to get started on development. So, we'll see how that all goes. But I'm all for it. I hope it happens. 
Bring the ca the Rena Cage. I'm calling it, not the Cage Assaults. The Rena Cage. Bring the Rena Cage on. Okay. Nice. Okay. I'll pick up all this stuff. All right. What else we got here? Um, Tim Sumo Five writes. Uh, PSA, Lionsgate is streaming some of their movies for free on their YouTube channel this month. Hunger Games is streaming right now. Yes, and actually, here's a funny thing about that. One of the movies they're going to be streaming is... Um, uh, is John Wick. They're doing Hunger Games, uh, and they're doing another one. I can't remember what the other one was. And the third one is John Wick that they're going to be doing. And here's a funny thing. Actually, I, one of their ad agencies that works for them actually reached out to me um, the other day to tell me about this thing they're doing. And they were asking if I'd be interested in, like, hosting one of the live streams. So I told them, sure, I'd be interested in that. I would I would be interested in hosting one of these live streams. And they asked me, which, which movie would I be interested in hosting? And I said, I well, I'd be interested in hosting the John Wick movie. Thank you. And that was like a week ago. And then I never heard anything back from them since. <laughs> so I don't know. So it was just thought funny because I remember I woke up to this email from this ad agency uh, that, that Lionsgate is working with. And you guys know I have a background with Lionsgate. I used to run um, um, Film HQ for Comic-Con HQ, which was a Lionsgate thing. So I used to work for Lionsgate. And so, yeah, one of their agencies reached out, said, would you be interested in hosting one of these movies? I said, sure. Uh, the one I'd be interested in, I guess, is John Wick. And that was the last I heard of it. <laughs> and I haven't heard of anything else. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's not going to happen. I'm guessing that's not actually going to happen. So what my guess is right now was that one of them had the idea for that and said, oh, let's reach out to John Campion and see if he'll do it. And then once they found out I said yes, then they probably went to their boss to say, we'd like to propose doing this. And then probably the boss asked it. Like, Campia, that freaking chud? No. So, I mean, I don't know. That's just what I'm assuming has happened at this point. But I don't know for sure. Oh, I must have chopped that. Okay, she must have chopped all these. Okay, what about these ones? Yeah, these ones. Okay. Uh, so there we go here. Um, Dan Ketchum writes, Last episode, Picard jumped the android shark. I disagree. I liked it. I thought it was very... I thought... Because I thought they're not going to do that. They wouldn't. They would dare. And they did. Which I thought was ballsy. Because you never would have thought they would have gone there. But they did. And I, I thought that was really ballsy. I liked it. I personally liked it. Now, let me, let me emphasize this though. I didn't love the finale. I didn't love the finale. But I, I certainly did love the season, but I didn't love the finale. But I did really, really like what they did with Picard. And I, I won't I won't give away, for those of you who haven't seen it yet and might still be wanting to see it, I won't give away what they actually do to Picard. But um, I, I, for one, was a big fan of what they decided to do. I thought it was really gutsy and ballsy. Uh, I thought it was kind of unexpected. Came out of left field. Uh, but it doesn't mean I liked the... I loved... I didn't love the, the, the finale overall you know what i mean um big big fan of the series big big fan of the season but i didn't love the finale so yeah i'll, I'll say that about it okay let's see here austin wayne scott writes uh, are there any other nintendo franchises you'd love to see film adaptations of if done right for me it's got to be Star Fox. uh stay safe out there i listen especially after breath of the wild i th i think you got to talk about uh link Right? I think you gotta talk, Link. When you're talking about potential franchises uh, from the Nintendo franchise, uh, from a Nintendo point of view, uh, I think you gotta be talking about Link. I mean, that's one that they gotta do. do I, like, wouldn't they have to do that one? And, uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be based on any one particular title uh, from the Legend of Zelda franchise. It can be any, it can be a mixture of them, it can be whatever. But I, yeah, I would think the first thing, I would say even before Mario, and I know Mario's the most popular character, but I don't know if Mario's the best adaptation for a movie. I would say the first thing Nintendo should look at adapting is actually uh, 
um, is Link, Legend of Zelda. I, th I think that's the absolute way they got to go. And with the popularity of Breath of the Wild, that just seems like a no-brainer to me. Now, I know Nintendo is still very, very gun-shy about the movie world because they have never gotten over the failure of Super Mario Brothers. And, and I, hey, listen, that was, that was a big one to get over. So they've never really recovered from that. And so I think they're always going to be very, very trigger-shy about getting back into feature films. But honestly, I think... I think uh, Link Zelda is is a treasure chest. I think that would be you do that one right, and of course it all depends on it being done right. But if you do if you do that right, forget about it. The success of that could be off the charts. And I'm not even a big fan of video game movies, but I'm telling you what, you do that one right, it could be incredibly popular with people. Oh, there goes my axe, and this is why I build a lot of axes. Please tell me I have another one. I think I have one more. I do. I have one more. Great. Yeah, so... I will stick with Zelda. Zelda's what they gotta do. Okay, in a second. Finish this row off. Okay, uh, What is next here? Oops. What happened? What happened? Something went wrong. <laughs> let me let me just try this again. I lost my uh, I lost my spot here. Give me a second here to get caught up. Okay, uh, okay, that was awesome. All right. So the next up is Jay Master who writes, "Hey John, today Disney announced Secret of Society: Second Born Royals, a new original movie coming out to Disney Plus in the summer of 2020. I have not heard of that, but I'll tell you what." I don't have a lot of faith in Disney Plus original movies because I've seen two and I did not like either of them. They did that Christmas one, Noel, that they launched the service with, with Anna Kendrick, who I love. I love Anna Kendrick. Um, so they launched with that Noel and I love Christmas. So I was automatically going to like it, right? It was awful. It was so bad. Um, and then I watched their Lady and the Tramp, and that, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think that was any good at all. I did not think their Lady and the Tramp one was good at all. So right now, I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in uh, Disney Plus original movies right now. Now that doesn't mean, this is a great sounding title. Uh, it's so it might, who knows, maybe it'll turn out being good, but yeah, I'm, I, I don't, I'll be honest with you, dude, I don't have a lot of faith in that department at Disney right now. All right, uh, Dude Man writes in, even though you probably won't play until dawn because it's PS4. Oh, until dawn because it's PS4. I have a PS4. Um, uh, you do a cutscene review because it's more like a movie than any other game, uh, and it's under ten hours. So you could watch it like a TV show. Until dawn. That's the one that um, uh, uh, Sam Witwer is in. Is it not? Is that not the one Sam's in? I think I see him tweet about it all the time, so I'll just assume that Sam's in that one. It actually looks really good. You know what? I might give that one a shot. I might give that one a shot. Because, you know, I've got the Nintendo Switch hooked up to my computer here so I can do the streaming. Uh, maybe I could do that with them till dawn if I'm thinking of the right game. If it is the one that Sam Witwer's in, then I, I may very well want to give that one a shot. Uh, so, but if not, I will I will, I will will consider doing a cutscene review of that. I used to do a bunch of those cutscene reviews, and I like doing them. I need to get back on them. Because I like doing those cutscene reviews. Um... And I, they used to, th those videos I make would get a bunch of views too. So clearly a bunch of people liked watching it. So I should probably do some more of those, dude, man. And like I've, like I said, I, I've heard it's good. Uh, I've heard people really enjoy it. Did I cut all the way over here? I can't remember if I came all the way over here or not. Yeah, I must have. Yep. Yeah, okay, I did these ones. All right, so how am I doing with wood here? I have 30, 60, 90, almost 120 wood. So that's 10, that's 20, 30,000. Oh, that's a lot. So anyway, thanks, dude, man, for putting that on my radar. I will I will look into that. All right, DC Marvel writes, Hey, John, I want to start playing Animal Cross Crossing. Should I? What's it about? So Animal Crossing, you know, honestly, people laugh at me when I say this, but it's the God's honest truth. Because I was watching Anne play it, and I'm like, what's the appeal of this? And the more I watched it, I realized this. This is basically Warcraft. This is basically World of Warcraft. It's just in a much more family-friendly skin. 
because, you know, you have to gather resources, you have to construct things, you get little mini quests, you kind of, you don't level up, but you build and develop your island, because when you start off, all you start off with is a tent. You start off with a tent, and it's just all these things as you build and build and build and build, and then you got these, um, you got these, uh, not landmarks, you've got these goals you have to hit as you progress and it's and I just realized yeah this is actually a lot like Warcraft which instantly as soon as I saw the similarity of that then I told Dan okay I'll help you play the game I'll, I'll go do your resource gathering for you which I've done now did I get these trees over here no nope. one second and so listen also during the the uh, the lockdown Honestly, a little game like this, because I've also been playing a bunch of Unreal Tournament, because that's like my, one of my all, one of, not my favorite all-time game, but I'd say my top five favorite all-time games. So I've been playing a bunch of Unreal Tournament lately again, but there's something about playing Animal Crossing that's also just really chill. It's just really chill and relaxing, and you just, and you just have a good time, and you hit these little goals and these little accomplishments, and it's pretty fun. So now I don't have a character of my own. This is Anne's character. And so I like I said, I just help out my wife. Oh, and I missed. But ah oh, shit. You know what? This is gonna kill me. Yep, this is gonna kill me. If you get stung after you've already been stung, yep, and I died. <laughs> or at least it knocks you out. And you wake up back at home. So I better take that medicine. Yep, if you get stung when you're already stung, like you can see my face is already effed up. If you get stung again after you've already been effed up. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to drop it. Hold on a second. I meant to take it. Okay. Take medicine. There we go. Um, yeah, if you get stung again, then you, I don't know, fall into a coma. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to describe it. You fall into a coma of some kind, and you wake up back at your house. So that's the best way I know how to describe it. So now I gotta go all the way back and figure out where I was. There was a tree I was chopping. Was it behind? No. Was it over here? No. Where was the damn tree I was just chopping? Come on! Because of frickin', frickin', frickin' bees, and I want to get their... I want to find their hive so I can kill their families. <laughs> oh well, I lost where it was. Okay, anyway, let's go, let's take another question here. Um, let's see here. Uh, that was DC Marvel, so, uh, so I hope that's helpful, DC Marvel. Uh, Mason B writes, hey John, how's this going? I'm having a good day, actually. Listen, I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This lockdown thing... Oh, there's the hive. Okay. This lockdown thing is really starting to get to me. I, uh, I am very much looking forward to getting out of the house. I'm very much... And, listen, Ann and I will go for walks in the evenings. That's great. But, I mean, I want to go to a... To a cafe. I want to go to a restaurant. I want to go to an outdoor patio and chill out and listen to some music and bring my iPad with me and do some work while people hustle and bustle around and I can order some food. And I mean, I just, and damn, I want to go to the movies again. Other than that, which I'm sure you're all in the same boat as me, uh, I'm doing pretty good, Mason. Thank you for asking. All right. Let's see here. Um, Simon Howe writes, did you hear that John Krasinski held a little YouTube uh, prom live stream on SGN? Yes, I did. Uh, he even had Rain Wilson stop by. Oh, that's great. By the way, uh, you're my hero. I watch you. Uh, I watch you and the all day, every day. Oh, thanks so much for that. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, uh, the thing John Krasinski, you know what? Here's what pisses me off, though. John Krasinski's been YouTubing for... What? Uh, a couple of weeks now? He is like the most popular YouTuber in the world now. I mean, maybe not literally yet, but he is like, honestly, like one of the most popular YouTubers in the world now. Just like that. It's like, oh my God. But what he's doing is so great. I'm telling you, I think, I think this whole um, some good news thing was a brilliant idea. I honestly thought it was a really brilliant idea. 
Um, and what he's do done with it is just fantastic. And people are enjoying it and eating it up. And I know I'm enjoying it uh, when he puts them on. So, and that whole prom thing was such a great idea. And then he started off with an interview with Steve Carell, which was a terrific idea. And yeah, man, just overall, just what he's doing is just really, really good. You know, it's just really good. And he's just such a pleasant dude. Like just such an absolutely pleasant dude. So yes, I did hear about that, Simon. I, 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 I assume it was great. I haven't watched it yet because Ann and I are going to watch that probably later. Um, but I just assume it probably went off great. And the fact that Rain Wilson pops in is just even better. So thanks for letting me know about that. All right, Dim Simo 5 writes, If you love Animal Crossing, you should play Minecraft. Has the chillness of Crossing plus a mix of survival and adventure available for PC too. Listen, I've had a lot of people over the years tell me I should try Minecraft. It just never looked like something that would appeal to me. To be fair, I never thought that Animal Crossing would appeal to me either. And yet here we are, right? Here we are nonetheless. Right, I need to drop some things. Hold on a second here. Um, so I will drop the softwood. I will drop the branches. I need to make room in my pockets here. I will drop the hardwood. I will drop the hives. I will drop the apples. Oop, I need room to drop them. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna make a mess. That's But that's okay, I'll let Anne clean up the mess. Um, I'm gonna drop the apples. Drop item. Yeah, again, because I, I, I just need to make room in my pockets right now. Drop item. Oop, I didn't mean to plant that. I just meant to drop it, whatever. Um, I will drop the stone. Drop that softwood. Okay, I should have enough. I should almost have enough. I don't know why there's a tin can there. I'll drop the tin can. Um, <laughs> she's going to be so mad when she sees the mess I'm making <laughs> around her place. Uh, drop item. Drop item. Drop item. Uh, what is this leaf? I can't see what it is, so I'll just drop item. Um... All right, that should be good. All right, I will now go and start crafting. Uh, let me see. Uh, but yeah, my cousin, my oh, sorry, my nephew, my nephew plays a lot of Minecraft. Apparently, he's like world champion or something like that. So maybe I should ask him about that. I don't know. I've always thought about it, but I never got into it. All right, Dude Man writes, it's a game that could easily be turned into a movie. Oh, are we going back to what you were talking about before, Dude Man? Until dawn. Okay, there we go. Uh, Dude Man writes, It's a game that could easily be turned into a movie uh, more than most because it's simple premise set in a cabin in the woods where weird goes down and the twists and turns really work. I've heard the story elements of it are really quite good. Oops, I gotta put that away. Yeah, I've heard the story of it's really good. It the Visually, it looks great. Uh, visually, that Until Dawn looks great. If I, Again, if I'm thinking of the right game, and I may not be thinking of the right game. But yeah, it sounds, it sounds really cool. Okay, now that I've gathered all that wood, there's hardwood, softwood, and regular wood. I'm going to make these things that are selling for twice the price right now, these low tables, and then go and sell them because I'm just here to make money for Ann because these low tables sell for double their price right now. So they sell for like 2400 wooden low table, and I will craft it. All right, there's one. Keep crafting. And this is just what I got to do for another few minutes here. But yeah, and listen, so I can't obviously comment, Dude Man, on whether or not it would make a good movie because I haven't played it or watched it yet. But I think I'm going to give a shot to playing it. Because um, I've, I've heard it's a really, really good game. I've heard it's not tremendously difficult because I have a hard time with, with remote control, like with controller, console controller games. Animal Crossing is obviously an exception. Um, so I've heard it's a quite, uh, a, like a not terribly difficult game to play. I've heard it's got good story, good characters. So I'm going to have to give it a shot. Now, once I do, uh, if I don't like playing it, I'll just watch the cutscene movie. And then once I watch the cutscene movie, then I'll give an opinion about whether or not I think that game could actually be turned into a movie. But, uh, it's one I'm looking forward to checking out. Okay, let's see who else is here. Dan Ketchum writes... Uh, Dan, uh, Dan Ketchum writes, During lockdown, I'm 40 pages into writing a novel. That's a great use of the time, man. Seriously. That is a great use of the time. 
Like, it, it, see, if you're stuck at home anyway, this is what we keep on talking about. But look, you might as well make lemonade out of the lemons. Since you're stuck at home anyway, and you got nothing but time, why not use that time to like, get caught up on some classic movies you've never seen? Maybe do some stuff around the house you've always wanted to get around to. What about writing a novel? That is a great idea. And this is a great opportunity, Dan, to, to do something like that. So good on you. Because what else is there to distract you right now, right? What else is there to distract you? So you might as well just get stick your nose down and get into it and write the damn thing. So good on you for that. All right. Uh, let's see here. One second. Keep crafting. Keep making these things. I still can make another bunch of them. All right. Uh, Michael Jones sends in a $50 super chat. Thank you so much, Michael, for supporting the channel on that level, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Michael Jones writes, Hey, John, my favorite movies from the 80s, besides Return of the Jedi, are Breakfast Club, Don't You Forget About Me, uh, Once Bitten, Weird Science, and Three O'Clock High. Casey, who plays Jerry Mitchell, looks just like you when I subscribe to the channel. Uh, I thought you were him. Ah, oh, well, I, I don't... I get some... I get Wayne Gretzky a lot. I get Liam Neeson sometimes. I don't know why I get Liam Neeson. I get Wayne Gretzky a lot, and I get Liam Neeson sometimes. I've never gotten that one, though. Listen, Breakfast Club... I've... It's probably been a good six or seven years since I've watched Breakfast Club again. I think I need to go back and watch that damn one again. Because that was... While it was very stereotypical, right? Like, the whole premise of Breakfast Club is that it plays on stereotypes and art and, and high school archetypes, archetypes, right? So in one sense, it's very surface. In one sense, it's very, very surface. But at the same time, it was actually quite profound. And the way it actually... The way John Hughes somehow knew what teenagers of the era how we thought and how we felt and you know all that kind of stuff and i remember being a teenager when that was happening i was a young teenager but um i just remember feeling like this is a this movie kind of gets it you know as a high school student at the time i just remember feeling this this movie gets what it's like being a high school student um and i've got to go back and revisit it again because it's like i said it's been a while since i have okay pretty soon my 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 uh pockets are gonna fill up and I'm not gonna have room. It's gonna say your pockets are full any minute now. No, I can still get another one. I've got enough wood to build two more. Okay. I have enough wood to build one more. There we go. Let's see if we can actually squeeze this in there. I'll say I'm all done for now. Woo! How much room do I have in my pockets? Oh, I still had room for a couple more. Do I have any more wood? See, the, the, the light yellow, that's soft wood. The dark is hard wood. It's the, the wood that's like in between. And nope, I'm all out. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to run over and I'm going to sell this stuff. And I'm hoping to get at least 30, 30,000, maybe more. We'll find out here in just a minute. I will get over there. But anyway, yes, Breakfast Club. And of course, it had like one of the great songs of all time to a movie. Like, seriously, like, you know a song is great for a movie when you just hear it for a second and it instantly takes you to that movie, right? Who doesn't think of Breakfast Even people who have never seen Breakfast Club. As soon as you start to hear, don't you, like, as soon as you hear that, boom. You are instantly transported that. Just kind of like the same with that Brian Adams song. Everything I do. Like you're instantly teleported to that Robin Hood movie, right? Like there are just some songs that are forever married to the movies that they played in. They became synonymous with and they became inseparable from. And and uh, Breakfast Club was one of those with that song. Absolutely for sure. Anyway, Michael, I like your list, man. I like your list. And, and again, dude, seriously, thank you so much for for uh, sending that in and supporting the channel on that level. I really, really appreciate it, man. All right. Uh, let's keep going on here. Oh, first, let me see what I can sell this for. The little rodents. Okay, I want to sell. Of course, what exactly are you offering? All right, I am offering a wooden low table and another wooden low table. And I'll throw in this long locust and another wooden table and another wooden table. And another wooden table. Low table, low table, low table, 
Low table, low table, low table, low table, low table, low table, low table. Wooden low table, wooden low table, wooden low table, wooden low table. And I think that one up there is something else, isn't it? No, wooden low table. Okay. Let's see what these. I'm hoping to get at least 30,000. Okay. 48,000. Nearly 50,000. I'd say that was time well spent. I think Anne will be very happy with that. Not to mention, I also got a gold nugget. Uh, which I think by itself is worth 10,000. Great. She'll be very happy with that. She'll be very happy with that. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, let's keep going here. Um, who was up was next? Chris Warden writes in. Uh, started rewatching The Office from the beginning during the lockdown. Such a great show. I'd easily put it on the same level as Friends and Seinfeld. Listen, I, I think the only argument is whether Seinfeld or The Office are the greatest comedies of all time. Parks and Rec is right up there too, but I probably have Parks and Rec just a hair beneath like Seinfeld and The Office. Just by a hair. Just by a little hair. Um, yeah, it's great. But you know what's funny? is that our friend Kaori, who I think Kaori might actually be downstairs right now. Our friend Kaori has never watched The Office. So right now, Anne's been going through and uh, exposing her to The Office. And they've been going through, and I think they just finished season one. And I think they're about to get into season two. Now, Robert Meyer Burnett has not watched The Office. And so Robert and I have talked about um, us doing a sit down and watch uh, thing so he can watch it for the first time. Maybe you guys can uh, follow along as he and I watch The Office. Okay, so now I'm going to go to another island to see if I can get some minerals. Because I need to build up some minerals. I got tons of... Well, I need more wood now too. Because I'm basically out of wood for Anne at this point. Um, but yeah, man, what a great... Right? This is, seriously, oh, there's a lot of nights... Where Anne and I are like, okay, we're done dinner, we're wrapped up for the night. What are we gonna do for the for the hour or two before we go to bed? I swear, at least half the time, all we do is slap on a random episode of either The Office or Parks and Rec and just watch it because we know we will laugh ourselves silly every single time. That's the power of The Office. It's absolutely unbelievable on that level. All right, uh, Wakanda, Wakandan Forever writes, uh, onward and upward, Excelsior, stay safe all. Nice well wishes and a lot of different cliches in there too. I like it. Well said, Wakandan Forever. Donaldo Martinez says, how did the theater audience react when they first saw the space battle in Return of the Jedi, uh, I imagine they were wowed. I couldn't tell you because I was... How old was I? I was 10, I think, or something like that uh, when it came out. I don't remember. I just remember myself being wowed. Like, I was absolutely wowed uh, by it. But I was t I was too young to remember um, what the theater was like at the time. You know what I mean? Okay, hold a second. I got to... Somebody taught me a trick. The last time I was playing this online, somebody taught me a trick, and I've discovered that it works. <laughs> I'll say I gotta do it again. Okay, gotta do it again. I'll second. Gotta do it again. Okay, there we go. Okay. The reason it's called Little Shadow Airport is because our two dogs are Lily and Shadow. That's why we called the airport Little Shadow. Yes. Uh-huh. I want to use the Nook Miles ticket. All right. Yep, time for takeoff. Okay. So, um, yeah, there you go. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what else we got in here? Um, yeah, so Donaldo, I, I don't remember. I was, not, I was not old enough to remember what the reaction was like from the audience. I just remember me as a child. I was, or as a kid, I was very, very wowed. Okay. Uh, Jaron Morris writes, um, other than ending and opening of last, there was another sad or touching scene for me 
Uh, it's the house scene with Joel and Ellie, or Henry said, oh, you're talking about Last of Us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, listen, th that's the thing about Last of Us is that what very, very few video games uh, do, even the best ones, uh, they're never really able to deliver real emotional weight. Some of them can be very fun. Some can have great adventures. Some can have very, like, really great stories. But almost none of them legitimately carry real legitimate weight, emotional weight to them, right? Last of Us really did, and, and that is the strength of Last of Us. Are these all apple trees? Oh my goodness, these are all apple trees. So you gotta understand, the reason I'm kind of excited about that is because apples on Anne's Island are worth 500 apiece. So each apple tree has three apples, that's 1,500 per tree. Anne is gonna be very happy with this. Um, and I also pick up weeds because you can actually make little, uh, items out of weeds. Oh, I didn't want the flower. Whatever. Um, so that's the thing, Jaren. Last of Us, it carries that emotional weight. And it's got great action. It's got a, a, a nice story, good background, all kind of stuff. But the thing to me that made that game special as a story was, again, that emotional weight. So I, I completely agree with you, Jaren. Uh, Jay Master writes, I read today on Yahoo the list of movies and TV shows coming to Disney Plus in May. And two of the movies are Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, and George... Oh, George of the Jungle is coming? It's so funny. Anne and I were just going through... What were we doing? We were going through the YouTube TV listings. And we saw that George of the Jungle was on one of the channels. But it was already like more than halfway over. And I said to Anne, man, I loved George of the Jungle when I was when I was younger. I loved George of the Jungle with Brendan Fraser. I thought that movie was really fun. And Leslie Mann... I thought that movie was really, really fun. And so um, I said, we got to watch that sometime soon. If it's actually coming to uh, Disney Plus, I, I give or take Maleficent, Mr. V, Mr. V, Mr. V, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But George of the Jungle. See, that that got me excited. That one got me excited. Thanks for letting me know, J Master. I don't know why I got so excited about that, but I am. I'm very excited by that. Okay, I'm going to pull out my net. Okay. You know, I'm going to leave those on the ground. I'm just going to shake these trees. I'm going to keep up the net in case any hornets come out, because I've been already, like, stung by hornets three or four times tonight, which is not fun at all. So I'm just going to get all the apples out of the trees. Then by shaking them, I'll know there are no wasps. And as long as I know there's no wasps, then I can come back around and chop the trees and get some wood back up again. And I'll scoop up these, uh... Scoop up these weeds. Okay, here we go. And shake the tree. You got me shaking the tree. Little Peter Gabriel there. Ooh, you go. Got me shaking the tree. I really like Peter Gabriel, by the way. In case you, didn't, in case you couldn't tell by me humming a few bars. I love Peter Gabriel. Oh, didn't mean to pick up the apple yet. That's fine. And I didn't mean to pick up that apple yet. But it's but again, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Don't mind me, local resident. I'm just here to pilfer your island of all your precious fruit. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to see here. I'm just here pillaging all of your fruit. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. Now I'll know I can go back through and chop these trees in a minute. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, let's see. Thanks for sharing. for letting me know about that, J Master. Jaron Morris said, I meant Last of Us. Oh, no problem, Jaron. I, I totally, I got it. I knew what you were talking about. Uh, Jaron Morris also writes, also, the music in The Last of Us is very beautiful and touching at times. Listen, just about everything about the production value of that game is done really, really top notch. And music is definitely one of those things. Uh, music is definitely one of those things that they do really well in the game. It's just such, it's just such, it's so well crafted. You know, not even as a game, but even at, just as a narrative story, it's very, very well crafted. And despite what some video ga game fans think that, oh, lots of games are, are movie cinematic like in their narrative. No, they're not. They're not. You, that, that's great that you can think they are, but they're not. Um, but Last of Us and a few movies, real, real special games like Last of Us. The other ones I think are like Uncharted 4 or uh, God of War that are just are have a cinematic, not look to them, 
but a cinematic narrative style to them that very, very few games have and very few games can pull off. I'm not saying these are the best games in the world. I'm just saying they're the ones that really lend themselves narratively uh, that they could be very, very cinematic. So that's how I kind of see that. Okay, uh, next up, uh, Ben Rayner writes, the dinner part and the contest to best, two best comedy, oh, you mean the dinner party. Two best comedy episodes of all time. Here's a fun crossover image. If Jan and Newman hooked up. Yeah, Jan was so great. By the way, I think it was IMDb uh, just did an interview with the actress. And I think you can find it on IMDb right now. They did an interview with the actress who played Jan on The Office and just talked to her about the dinner party episode. That's all they did. They just talked about the dinner party episode, which was awesome. Um, okay, hold on a second. Now I need to see if I can get some minerals here. A second, dig a hole. I dig the holes because that way, when I bounce back, I won't get out of range of the rock. So that's why I dig those holes. Rock, clay, stone, iron. Good, I need iron. Good, more iron and clay. Okay, great, I think that'll do. I'll pick these up. Because this is limited resources here. All right, let's cover up these holes. Um, but yes, dinner party is... Yeah. Man, I don't know. I don't know that the dinner party isn't the best. Uh, the best uh, episode of sitcom television ever. It, it, I think you can make an argument. It is the best episode of uh, of uh, sitcom television ever. It's just because it's not just hilarious. It just utilizes everything that came before it so perfectly. Oh, another gold nugget. I got two gold nuggets in one night. Unbelievable. I don't think that's ever happened before. I mean, to me. I'm sure other people have had it happen. I just I don't think that's happened to me before. All right. And we'll be very happy about that. Uh, kick those. So yeah, dinner party, absolutely. Contest was great too, but dinner party. I mean, that's 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 the shit right there. Dinner party is absolutely the shit for sure. All right, Jaron Morris writes. I don't think neither will die, but what will have a bigger impact, Joel's death or if they did it and Ellie's death? Um, it's hard to say when we haven't seen the game yet. It all depends on what they do in this game to set that up right so uh, it's it's absolutely impossible to say right now i mean ellie's the younger character so there's a little bit more tragedy to the idea of her dying but joel has also been our main character i mean th that's the first character we come across in the game is joel but again until we see what the story of this one is because if the story goes one way and they focus on certain things in the game then Joel's death will have a bigger impact. However, if they do different things in the game and make like her the, the bigger focus, then her death will be the bigger impact. So it's, again, it's really, really difficult to say. I do know this, fans of the game, if they kill either one of those characters, and I have a feeling they will, uh, there are already some whispers I think that Joel dies in it, but I, I mean, nobody knows that. Um, but if they kill either of these characters, particularly the fans of the game are going to be distraught. Like, totally distraught. Totally, totally distraught they will be. Uh, if that happens. But we'll have to wait and see. And I, and again, I'm on record. I think they will kill one of them. I think one of them will die for the other. And personally, I think they'll have Joel die. Uh, trying to save L, But don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe they won't kill either of them. Okay. All right. Almost through this. All right, let's take the next one here. Uh, Heroes Fan Productions writes, John, if there's anything that will get you to at least appreciate the Clone Wars, it's last night's episode because, oh my God, the quality, the narrative, the tone, and the visuals all skyrocketed. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. I'm sure the animation is very good, but I've had so many people say to me, John, the, you love the Clone Wars because of blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I, don't, I just don't see it. it. It just doesn't work for me. 
But I'm sure it's got great action. Like, I believe, I, I think I read somewhere that it's like the Siege of Mandalore. Um, which I'm sure it has a lot of big action set pieces in it and stuff like that, which I'm sure is great. But, yeah, it's just... Again, it's just not for me. It's just, it's not a series that works for me. I should probably talk to this cross-dressing monkey. Unless I'm wrong and it's a girl. Let me talk. First, I should put my axe away. Never good to start a conversation with an axe in your hand, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I'd never run into anybody else here. I was starting to feel like a castaway on a deserted island, sweetie. Don't call me sweetie. Uh, and there you were. What a relief. Anywho, I'm Violet. Pleasure to meet you, Anne. Uh, so you're visiting all the way from Little Shadow, are you? Lovely. Little Shadow's the name of our island. Well, I do hope this island lives up to our expectations. I suppose there's only one way to find out. It's so relaxing. I feel like a movie star. Off on an exotic vacation. Come to my island. What? Are you quite serious? If I remember right, you said you're from Little Shadow? Oh, Anne will love it if I get another resident to her island. Best decision ever. Uh, a simple call to Tom Nook from... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, talk, 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 talk. Okay. Now, allow me to continue pillaging. Uh, okay. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah. Hero Fans Productions. But, uh, so, I appreciate the recommendation, but I've tried six seasons plus one episode of Clone Wars. It, it just doesn't work for me. I'm not saying it shouldn't work for you, and I'm not saying other people shouldn't like it. That's awesome. But I have tried six full seasons plus one episode, and I know that it does not work for me. So, I doubt one episode would probably change the narrative of that, you know what I mean? I, I doubt one episode would change that. But, uh... What, why can't I get not get this shovel? There we go. Okay, there's a star on the ground, which usually means it's a fossil. And it is. Anne likes getting fossils. Okay, so back to the other thing here, of shaking the tree with the net. No, just shake the tree. Just shake the stupid tree, you idiot! Here we go. John's getting angry at the digital characters again. I know. Ah, shake the tree. Ah. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can. Uh, what's my best bet here? I think my best bet is to dig right here. Yes. And then dig right there. Great. And then square up. Clay. 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 Iron. Iron. Good. Clay. Stone. Iron. Great. Okay. I could use all of this. Very handy. Size these up. Okay, but anyway, thank you for the recommendation anyway, Hero uh, fan. I appreciate that. Donaldo Martinez writes, um, Interesting fact. Did you know Matthew McConaughey played a murder victim in one of the reenactments of Unsolved Mysteries? I did not. It's always funny, though, when you hear about these, like, before they were famous, the acting gigs that some of these actors had before they were big and famous. That one's kind of funny. Who was it? Somebody wrote into me the other day to say, was it Tobey Maguire that was, like, one of the kids in the, um... One of the kids in the arcade from Back to the Future? I think somebody said that. I can't remember exactly, but I always get a kick out of hearing these little things, like, what they were doing before they became who they are today. I always get a kick out of that. Um, so thanks for sharing that one, Magic K. Oh, that wasn't Magic K. Who was that? Um... Donaldo, thank you for sharing that, Donaldo. I appreciate that. Matthew McConaughey was <laughs> in Unsolved Mysteries. All right, I got to tell Anne that. 
Actually, I got to tell uh, Kaori that because Kaori loves those unsolved mystery types of shows. She loves those. Oh, there goes my axe. Oh, and I didn't... That's my last axe. Oh, well. Might as well bring out the big boy. That was my last stone axe. Now I just got to use the... Uh, the big axe that... The unfortunate thing about the big axe is that it chops the trees down. If you're not careful. So, I will try to be careful. I will try to be careful. Alright. Let me get out of here. Alright. Pick up some more of these weeds just to get them out of my way. And I got another stone, which is good. Pull some... Pull some minerals out of this thing here. Give me a second. Line it up with the shovel. Dig. Dig again. Great. Hopefully the shovel won't bust. Okay, stone. Oh, was that iron or another gold one? I think it was probably well, it was iron. But still, I need the iron, which is great. Okay, great. Pick all this garbage up. Fill in the holes. Okay, um, let's see. Thanks for that, Donaldo. Magic K writes, you can invite the local to Anne's Island if you talk to them. I just did that, but thank you because I, but to be honest, Magic K, I just learned that recently. So if I hadn't have just learned that recently, you would have just given me a new piece of information that I didn't have. So I appreciate you looking out for me there, Magic K. Uh, Dim Simple 5 writes, anytime anyone talks about the movie Live, Die, Repeat, all I hear is the end credits song. I need to know now, know now. I don't remember. I, I don't remember the um, the song at the end of uh, what's it called Edge of Tomorrow. I don't remember that. I don't remember the song. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's we gotta be careful with this big axe. Is that if I'm not on my own island, so it's okay. So I don't mind um, the tree falling down. But like, if I you're on your own island, you don't want to destroy your trees. So you gotta be careful with that. So I've got to be careful with that. But I'm picking up all these apples, which is good. Um, yeah, I don't remember the song. I have to, I'm going to have to go back there now, Dim Sum, and, and check that out to see if I can remember the song. All right, David Goldstein writes, Thoughts on the most recent Black Lightning season? I am only about three episodes in. All right? I'm only about three episodes in. So I need to get caught up on it. So I, I like it so far. Um, I like it so far. It's not my favorite season so far, but again, like I said, I'm just a couple of episodes in right now. I've got to get caught up on it. But, you know, I like what I'm seeing up to this point. I like what I'm seeing up to this point. All right, I need to get to the other side of this. So I have to climb up here again, I think. Do I, though? Maybe not. Hold on a second. You can just pole vault over this. Yeah, I'll just pole vault. Okay, so I got all the apples from here. I got all the apples from over there. I got all the apples from the top. I got all the apples. All right, I guess I got everything I can get from here. See if there happens to be any big fish in the ocean. Yeah, that's probably a sea bass. Ooh, a bottle. Anne likes those. All right, so now I will fly back to Little Shadow, Shadow Island. Uh, yes. I'm ready to go home. Are you sure? You're positive? Yes, I'm positive. Yep, back home. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Leech, uh, Leech Live Reactions writes, Malcolm in the Middle is probably one of the best shows, if not in the top three, for Fox behind King of the Hill and The Simpsons. You know what? I, I am... I was never big on King of the Hill. I love Simpsons, and so, and it's really weird because like all my friends who love Simpsons also loved King of the Hill. So you would think I would also like King of the Hill, but for whatever reason, it just never, um, it, it just never did it for me. For whatever reason, I can't explain why it never did it for me, but yeah, King of the Hill just never really worked for me that much. And I don't know why, but a lot of people really did like it. I was also never much into Malcolm in the Middle, but that's mostly because I never really 
committed to watching it much. I've seen a few episodes, so maybe if I dedicated myself to watching more of it, maybe I'd like it a lot more than I do. But it was just never one that appealed to me on the surface of that. But yeah, I was always a Simpson guy. Even the bad seasons. Even the bad seasons, I love watching Simpsons. Okay, let's see how much I get for these apples. I'm offering apples. How many do I have? I have 10 apples. I have 20 apples. I have 27, 37, 47, 57 apples I have for you today, good rodent. And you know what? I accidentally picked up these flowers, so I'll sell these to you too. Because I really don't want the flowers. Okay. How much do I get? Another 30,000. Well, almost 30,000. Sold, dumb rodent. Okay, now I gotta get back and drop some things off at the house. Uh, okay, Ben Rayner writes, It was Frodo in... Oh, he said, so it wasn't Tobey Maguire. It was... Um, why am I freezing on... Why am I freezing on the name of the actor who played Frodo? I was... Uh, uh, Tobey Maguire and... Why am I freezing on the name of the actor who played... I'm freezing. I'm, I'm getting. A, I'm having a brain freeze, guys. I'm having a brain freeze. I forgot. I forgot his name. All right. Uh, let's see. Hero Fan Productions writes. I very much get we're out. Uh, sorry. I very much get we're where you're coming. We're your we're where you're coming from, John. I'm happy to say that this last arc will finally intertwine with Revenge of the Sith. Uh, there was actually a sense of urgency in the plot that made it riveting. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know, hero. I mean, maybe, but I'll, I do know this. I watched the first episode of the season, right? So I watched the first episode of the season, and it really just felt like a... You never know that it was the first episode of the last season of something, right? There, there was no sense of direction to it. It was just a standalone... Um kind of thing. It, it, it didn't feel like it was wrapping up anything. I thought, huh, this feels like a missed opportunity, and then I, I kind of gave up on it. But you're saying there might be something there, so I don't know. Maybe. I'll tell you, if I get like 20 more people, Hero Productions, if I get like 20 more people telling me that I really, really should be checking out um, uh, drop item, drop item, drop item, Drop item. Uh, drop this. Okay, now I gotta move. Drop that. Drop that. And drop that. Yeah, if I get like another 10, 20 people telling me, John, believe me, you will like this last season. You, in particular, Campia, will like this last season of Clone Wars. If I get a bunch of people telling me that, then maybe. Maybe I'll sit down and try Episode 2 of Season 7. Because, like I said, I watched Episode 1 of Season 7. It's like, nope, don't like this any more than I did before. Still find it kind of lazy. But that's me. Again, I'm not saying nobody else should like it. Because I know everybody else likes it. And that's great. I, I love that other people like it. Uh, it's just... And I wish I liked it. Believe me, it's a Star Wars thing. I wish I liked it. Just like I wish I liked Rise of Skywalker. It's a Star Wars thing, so I wish I liked it. But, eh, no, it's it's just not likable. To me. To me. All right, I need to go to the museum and get this fossil assessed. So, Because you can't sell the fossil or do anything with the fossil until you take it to the museum and get the museum curator to assess the fossil. So I'm going to talk to him now, if he'll put his frickin' book away and look at me. There we go. Yes, I want to assess fossils. I would like you to assess the only fossil I have. Confirm. Let me see here. Hmm. Indeed. Okay. Hoo-hoo! After some you can see to get this fossil to be a Diplo tail tip. Superb indeed, splendid. A rare fossil we do not yet have in our collection. 
Diplo tail tip is the kind of discovery you want to showcase in the museum. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it to the shop, see what they'll buy it for. Um, I'm going to see if, how much it'll sell for. If it doesn't sell for a lot, I'll bring it back and donate it. I will bring it back and donate it. Nope, I'm good. Okay. All good. Um, all right. David Goldstein writes, do you think it will be another five to seven years before we see another Star Wars movie? Uh, five to seven? No. I don't think it'll be that long. I mean, there's still some talk that we're going to get one in 2022. Right? There have been reports that we're still getting a movie in 2022. Um, and I'm not so sure how much I believe that idea that we're going to get one in 2022. However, um, that being said, if it's not in 2022, I think it'll be in 2023 or 2024. So yeah, no, I, I, I honestly don't think we're going to have to wait that long. I think we're going to have to wait a bit. I think we're going to have to wait a bit, but I don't think we'll have to wait that long for another Star Wars movie. And again, uh, I have my doubts, but there are still these persistent whispers and, and rumors and reports that we're that Lucasfilm is still planning to do one in 2022, which means no new Star Wars movie in 2020, no new Star Wars movie in 2021. It's, it's so it's going to be a while, but yeah. Okay, I want to sell. How much would you buy this fossil off me for? Diplo tail. Four thousand. No, Anne will want me to donate it. Oh, are you sure? Yes, Rodent, give me my damn thing back. You little rat. Okay. I will take it back to the museum and donate it. Anne likes it when we donate things to the museum. Her museum's starting to come along. For those of you who play the game and know what we're talking about, her museum is starting to come along pretty okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, back to the Star Wars thing. I just can't see, if it doesn't happen in 2022, I really can't imagine that we wouldn't get one in 2023. And I think it's, I think it's impossible that we don't get one by 2024. Highly unlikely we don't get one by 2023. Almost impossible that we don't get one by 2024. Or by the end of 2024. So, no, I don't think we're gonna have to wait that long to get, uh, uh, to get uh, uh, another Star Wars movie. And it's going to be interesting to see where they decide to go next. Okay, I'm going to make a donation. Marvelous, what would you like to donate? Your mom. No. <laughs> when I say that, I don't know. I'd like to donate your mom. Ooh, could it be? It is. Yes, I was just here, you idiot. A Diplo tail tip. I never thought I'd lay his eyes on such a well-preserved Diplo tail tip. Uh, no, I don't want to hear the stupid story about it. There we go. Nope. I'm fine. Jolly good! Okay, so listen guys, uh, I've been going for about an hour and a half now playing, and I'm still going to play a little bit longer, but I would like to go... My, my drink is empty, guys. Sad face. My drink is empty. Uh, if you guys will indulge me for a couple of minutes... Uh, I'm gonna run downstairs and just uh, refill my drink. So hang out, talk amongst yourselves. I will be like uh, two minutes. T two minutes, two and a half minutes. I might use the bathroom too. So uh, just hang in there and uh, I will be right back.
Hey guys, I'm back. Um, but it's not just me. No, it's not just me. I'm actually gonna step aside here for a second. So I'm gonna plug my headphones for a second. I'm gonna let A Cake step in. She's gonna tell you what she's doing. Hold a second. A beans. <laughs> what am I doing? Well, whatever it is you need to do. Okay. Oh, I just donated a tip low tip tail or something like that. Oh, a oh, it's fossil. dinosaur. Yeah. Okay, so. Corey's gonna come over because look how little she is. <laughs> look how short she is, guys. She's so little. Oh, my face is super greasy right now. Um, I one of the things that we do is we visit each other's town so that we can make more money on the fruit sales. So Corey's hoarded all of her fruit. She's gonna come over and visit. But before she does, or as she's queuing up her game, I'm gonna. Go home real quick and change, because that's really important. You're gonna go home and change. <laughs> well, this is so important. Well, you know, this is like my work outfit as I try to chop the trees and stuff. And it's also raining in my town, Corey. In case you need to bring an umbrella or something. And he says, "Hey, Anne." Hello. He says, "Adorable." <laughs> I, I got I made umbrellas. A, I made a mess around your farm too. It's fine. Around your house. Have you seen my second floor? No, I haven't seen your second floor. I, there's nothing in there right now. I have trying to load up on uh, what I want to do with it. So right now it's just an oh, like, look at your second floor. Weird floor that I, don't I found. Like the pillar I know. Wallpaper. I'm kind of just playing around Pour with. Or the water on the floor. I like these like animated. Um, oh, hi Anne. Do you have a visit from? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Miss is playing right now. Maybe he is. This is one of your viewers, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Then change. <laughs> Are you queued up? Uh, I just need to... Uh, oh, okay, cool. Gives me time to change. So, if you're playing Animal Crossing, you would, n you would know that you can access any of these um, things with a, with a door. I don't know how, how they queue it up but like even your mini fridge you could open it and you can ch use that to change it's odd so I figure it's like anything with access to a door so my character's gonna get naked real quick <laughs> so she can change into an outfit let's see we will go with Last. Oh, oh, I have to show you my Paddington outfit. Oh, yeah. Here we go, here we go. Also, let me get her. <laughs> I just see the top of Waka's head. Huh. Uh oh, where'd she go? Oh, there she is. Yeah, all the fruit. Um, I think, and you guys tell me, I think it's. Any fruit that you take from your island and you sell on someone else's will, will go for a higher value. I don't know if that's a proven fact or not. All right. So here's my faux. Until I get the right hat, I'm going to okay. throw on my Paddington outfit. What about any fish? I'll just sell my fish. Yeah, might as well if you're coming <laughs> over. As you see, guys, my stream has been completely hijacked. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wear my rain boots because it's raining. Oh, let me put my rain boots on. <laughs> Very important. All right. 
check on my outfit. And then I'm going to check my storage so I could grab some things that I think she might like. Because I like to give gifts. <gasps> Ooh, do you have a tub yet? No, I would love oh, a tub. Oh, okay, that's perfect. She will also like this because of the color. Uh, what could I give you? I don't have it. I, anything. I'm not nearly as I'm going to give you that, too, just because I don't care for pink. <laughs> uh, this, too. <laughs> and this. I'll give you this. Okay. I like it. Oh, and you... I don't know. It's all pink. A little closer than like the other. Okay. All the pink things are going to you. I won't be offended if you choose to sell this later. Just don't uh, sell it in front of me because that, that will hurt. No, I won't. <laughs> I keep all your stuff. And Okay, so Corey is trying to come over and visit Anne's <laughs> Island on her Nintendo Switch. So I just need Anne to be able to do all the things she needs to do. So. I got Even though she's probably more entertaining than me. ton of matching stuff that I'm going to give to you okay, so I, that we have I'm matching outfits. Right now. Um, <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me open the gates. Let me, I just need my umbrella. Where's that at? Do I have one? Oh, yeah, I do. All right. Don't mind the house. It's under construction. I think I want to turn the upstairs. Is that your bear outfit? This is my Paddington outfit. <laughs> Until I could, they start selling that hat. It's not quite the hat, but I think you get the point. So, how much money did you make? About 100000 Whoa. Is it in her pocket right now? Yeah. Oh, because there's a bridge I have to pay off. Oh. Much better. <laughs> okay. You got an umbrella? I have an umbrella. <laughs> so I will open my gates so that Kaori can come visit. Uh, we always make fun of this dodo guy because he's just seems like he's in a panic all the time. Orville. Yes. <laughs> so say I want visitors. Uh, we play local play for this one. Roger. See, he's just always like sweating. It might be because his wings don't actually hit the keyboard. It's making him <laughs> stressed out. <laughs> Alrighty. Gate is open. One of my favorite parts is when Kaori walks through the gate. <laughs> Feels like a real gate entrance. Yes. Looks like we got a flight for Little Shadow. <laughs> so let's fly. Thanks, Tater Tots. Chocolate. <laughs> Looks like someone's on their way oh, here. Oh, I wonder who it is. Here I come. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the best parts. It's like they really thought about this loading screen. So cute. So on Kaori's screen, she'll see what the plane flying over? Or what are you seeing right now? I am seeing, yeah, the plane flying over. And then I see the flight information of who's coming to visit. Starting descent. So close. <laughs> so one of the things when people visit your town is um, you're kind of locked out of doing certain things like you can't do any renovation or move anything because it's rude to to try to decorate while guests are over which is great oh here she comes oh so cute 
We have matching boots on right now. I love it. <laughs> Was I in the airport when you arrived or no? Because I'm sitting right here. Oh, let me go. Oh. <laughs> I, I, it forced me to come out. Oh, okay. This way. Let's see. It's like automatic. Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of Paddington. Almost. Whoa. You're so <laughs> Thank you, David Goldstein. Yay. Oh, yes. And then I got some new emotes, too. You do? I got a heartbreak one, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Was John's favorite? What's the one that you liked from the other day? Surprise? Uh. Or shock? Oh, this one. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, there's been a murder! Oh I'm, my god! I'm sorry, but it looks like he accidentally just put it in the wrong hole. That's what her Horrible. face looks like. Okay. <laughs> That's what her face looks like. Go ahead, do what do you need to do. Again. Do the okay. face again. Okay. I'm gonna go sell my pig. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'll wait for you to come up. Okay, I'm coming. What is happening? I'm stuck in this emote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, coming. It's funny how all of your things are close to each other except for your museum. Yeah. It shows me your priority. You're like, yes. ah, the museum's clear. All the villagers can have no land <laughs> for all I care. Also, have you been over since I moved? No. Oh, I have to show you that first. Oh, oh not first. Come sell your shit. Okay. Later, so I can get back in. Oh, hold on, hold on. She just has to sell. Oh. Do you, sell you, sell you, ans you, you can answer and I'll play. I, no, I can't. I, I need to sit down and like, <laughs> so I like, give you a switch back in a little bit. Oh my god, you have a green panda? Yeah, go ahead and buy it. Should I ask you the qu questions? Where are you at? Okay. I mean, I've got it back up. I'm oh, okay. Well, I will do a tour. Of, have they seen my town? Yes, I took them around town and I showed them your estate. Oh, yes, I'm my just gonna estate. Quietly buy my did you see what I did over here? So there's a little bit of lag, probably, because that's fine. So, did you see what I did over here in this area? In the orchard? I just chopped all the trees. I added these paths. Oh, the path is beautiful. And then if you go down. All the way down, I added water. And here's the ramp I'm trying to pay off. So if there's money in her pocket, I could do it, I think. Good evening, buddy. I think the little tree thing is Canadian. She says buddy. Buddy. Currently, we have. No, this will pay it off. But remember all that money I had? It's gone. I know. This game easily blow through it. I think maybe one more ramp or bridge, and I believe all the areas of the island are connected. Which is nice. Yes, buddy. You will have a ramp right here. And then... Wow, that's good. Nice. I had fifty. Wow. Sorry, this lagging. The the other thing is, if it's raining, you don't have to water your flowers. Where are you? I'm up in my flower area. Wow, you really like improved the flower area. Yeah. I'm not even close to this level. <laughs> oh, that dome was awake. Wow. Oh, look at her. That was a cute one. What? Derwin. Oh, yeah, he's cute. My neighbors are cuter than yours, I think. When I went to an island, I got one. Yeah. I got a new place to save Oh, nice, because I have two plots of land. Are you going to go to another island? Maybe? Uh, do you have a ticket? Yes. Oh my god, do you have a rock climbing wall? Yeah, I do. <laughs> because, yes, I have, I'm trying to get more neighbors crammed into this spot. So I have two plots of land open right now. Oh, yeah, I'm going to shove all of them in this area. Oh. You're my inspo. I also have the uh, drunk pelican here. <laughs> oh, I, I'm 
Oh, oh, he is cute today. Look at his outfit. Your tree has money on it. So tempting. Where? No, don't, touch don't touch it. I won't. Is it near my house? It's actually, uh, it's actually a study that we're doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, we... I won't touch it. We're studying. Certain days, most days you can just up to 10,000. Uh-huh. I don't know if you can hear John. We have a money tree experiment. For which days will let you put in ninety nine thousand? Oh. Okay, I don't want to talk to him. Oh, I'm gonna drop off your gift. I don't know. Oh you know. yeah yeah yeah. Before you leave, hold on. I'll leave it by the airport. Okay. That's fine. You could leave it outside. I'll leave all your stuff. You have empty airport. pockets now, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't have huge offerings, just like real life. <laughs> <laughs> Drop item. There's a lot of your color that's coming at you. Yeah, take what you need. We get really stuck into this. Yeah. Easily we can sit down and say, oh, we have to just do this one thing really quick and then two hours pass. Two hours. You, I got you the coolest tub, though. Ooh, the pink? Yes. <gasps> I have a pink toilet. <laughs> uh, this you have to visit me later. Yeah. There's a ton of stuff right here. Just take it. Where? Oh, in the at, the, at the bridge going to the airport. Oh, okay. Wow. I save everything. Save wow. everything. You moved all your houses together. Yeah, they're like uh, inner city crammed San Francisco style. By the way, I dropped a lot of stuff that was in your pockets in your house storage. Okay. I need to get more they pop, like, various blah, blah, blah. flowers. I have all the ones you have. I think that might be all of them, though. Maybe. Oh. All right, I learned the recipe. Okay, here's all your stuff. Oh, thank you. Enjoy. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Some of it. You, like, one no, don't even worry <laughs> about it. The fact that you come visit my island is enough. Hey, Christine, come visit me later. <laughs> you should put on that duck beak. It's so cute. <laughs> 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 Thank you. So we usually say goodbye. <laughs> do they, hu do they, hug? they can't hug. Oh, that would be awesome. I know. All oh, those gifts. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Hasta soon. That was fun. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait to see your reaction to all the stuff I <laughs> dropped for you. All right. So I think once she's. Out. I will yeah. turn this back over to John. Oh, I, I want to go home. I, I have a kind of a Sherlock hat. Yeah. Oh, there was a detective hat. I should have bought it. Shoot. I will so buy it for cute. you. Okay. Back to your... Oh, I get to play my game again? Yeah. Oh, that's... It's your game, actually. A, bean. <laughs> a beans. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're back. And can you do me a big favor? Could you pour me another uh, one, uh, Zemia, with some ice? Thank you, honey. Okay, guys. We're, we're back. The, the, the more attractive Campia is back. The, the sexy. Campy is back. Uh, nice. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm back. Okay, first of all, let's start getting caught up with some questions. I think I was a little bit behind. Um, let's see. All right, Hero Fan Production writes. Uh, I very much get where you're coming from, John. I'm happy to say that this last arc will finally intertwine the Revenge of the Sith. We're actually a sense of urgency. Oh, we already we got that one. Sorry. And then we already then we do David's about the next Star Wars movie. Um, uh, then Heroes Fan Productions writes, Oh man, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, the last two arcs 
in this season didn't even make it feel like the final season. And then episode nine happened. If you asked me, season seven really begins here. Really? Season seven actually begins in like episode nine? See, I don't know. I don't know. See, you're not doing a good job selling me on this, dude. You're not doing a good job selling me on this, but I, I don't know. Maybe I might have to give it a shot. I might have to give that a shot. Okay, so what did Anne do here? Let me just move some of the stuff around in my pocket. Um, oh, I need to go and make a new... I for sure need to go and make a new axe, because uh, I busted my final axe. Let me move this gold nugget so I don't lose them. Okay, so I gotta run back to her house and make make uh, at least one more axe. Um, so yeah, I, again, I will give it, if, if I get like 10 or 20 more people writing me say, John, not only is it good, we think you will like this, then I will give the new, I will give, even though I watched the first episode already, I will give the new season of Clone Wars a shot. What did I come here for again? Oh yes, because I had to build an axe. So what do I need? I need to, I need, I think I need that and stone, I think. No, nope, not wood, I need stone. There we go. All right, let's try this. Let's see if we can build another axe. Okay. Should I craft something? Yes, you should craft something. So Anne and Corey are gonna be downstairs now doing whatever, probably talking more about Corey's cute duck, duck face. go flimsy axe I better make one more just to be safe okay okay there's another one oh what's that honey no not yet okay I'll figure out how to do that thank you baby and just asked me to close the gate Ask me to close the gate. Um, oh, yeah, somebody's asked me to remove the second camera feed. Yes, I should probably do that. There we go. Second camera feed gone. Thank you for the reminder, everybody. Uh, keep crafting. Okay, now I make the actual axe. See, to, to make the stone axe, and what do I need here? I need wood. To make the stone axe, you first have to make the... And I know I had some regular wood. There it is. You first have to have a flimsy axe to make the stone axe. So I had to make the two flimsy axes first. Now I can make two stone axes. Okay, here we go. There's one, and then one more. Keep crafting. Craft it. There we go. Okay, now I can go travel. All right. Uh, so thanks for the thanks. You you really pushed me hard in this one, Hero uh, Heroes Fan Productions. To try out this one, you're pushing me hard. I respect that. I respect that. All right, Kevin writes. If you hold down the L, the conversations go faster. Oh really? I didn't realize that. I learned that while you're constructing, while you're crafting. If you hold down, ooh, I need to go this way. If you hold down the uh, A button, uh, if you hold down the A button, you craft things faster, so I learned that. Do I have to go this way? No, I have to go this way. So I learned that, but if you hold down L, the conversations go faster. That's the left trigger, I'm assuming. I am definitely going to take advantage of that. Thank you for the insight on that, Kevin. That's going to help that go a lot faster, because I hate getting in these long conversations. All right, Dan Ketchum writes, should studios have contract requirements telling female leads not to get pregnant, uh, such as Benoit's situation in Supergirl? Dude, that would be so illegal. That would be so illegal. Uh, not to mention, if any studio try to put into a woman's contract that she's not allowed to get pregnant, what, what do you, look, pregnancy happens. Pregnancy happens. But if anybody tried to do that, you would have a boycott of that studio, brother. You would have a serious boycott of that studio. Um, because, because what's going to happen? So what happens if she gets pregnant? Like, she signs a contract not to get pregnant. It doesn't mean to get pregnant, but gets pregnant. Guess what? It happens. People who had no intention of getting pregnant get pregnant all the time. So, no, you work around it. I mean, it's life, man. It's life. You just work around it. 
stuff happens. So no, I do not believe they should try to put in rules into contracts that a woman will not get pregnant. Because what are you going to do if she does? What, what are you going to say? According to your contract, you have to get an abortion. Is, is that what you're going to do? No, obviously not. Um, so no, I, I do not think it would be a good idea for movie studios to put in um, that women cannot get pregnant. I mean, it's not a bad idea to put into contracts saying, hey, in the event that you get pregnant, um, you agree that we can do this, this, or this, and, and you agree to do this to make us picking up our schedule easier, blah, blah, blah. So you can do things like that. But actually putting in to say, no, women can't get pregnant, I don't think you can do that. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I don't think you can do that, no. All right, uh, Bobby Jackson writes, John, do you prefer turn-based or real-time RPGs? It all depends on the game. Like, for instance, with, um, like... World of Warcraft, I like real time. But something that I loved about Final Fantasy VII, a part of the DNA of that game was the turn-based system. That's just part of what that game was. It just doesn't feel like Final Fantasy VII to me without the turn-based system. So it really all depends on the game, Bobby. It really all depends on the game. All right, uh, let's see here. Tater Tots, hold on a second, let me... Oops, nope. Uh, I'm good, thanks. Okay, because I forgot. Oops, I sorry, I gotta close the gate. Okay, close the gate. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because I guess if the gate's open, then anybody can come and visit the island. Okay. Now I will do the emote. Apparently, if you get him to blush um, before you book your ticket, it increases the chances that you'll get to go to a special island, like the Apple Island that I landed on, which is great. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, take off. Okay. Um... Let's get you airborne. Yes. Let's get me airborne. Okay. Tater Tots writes, uh, there's a great side-scrolling shooter um, for Switch called My Friend Pedro. Really? I've I've gone through the store. I don't remember seeing that one. Okay. So it's a side-scrolling shooter called My Friend Pedro. Awesome Matrix-like slow-mo mechanics and just super fun. Check out the trailer. I will definitely do that. You know, because it's funny because I was laying in bed the other night with the Switch and I just thought I'd look through the store and seeing if I could find anything that caught my attention. I did not come across that one, so I was kind of hoping to find a good recommendation for another uh, another good game for the Switch. So thank you for that, Tater Tots. I appreciate that, and I will check it out. I will absolutely check that out. All right, David Goldstein writes, Arrow After Show crew back together. Yeah, me, Anna, and Corey. <laughs> was, that, is kind of, that was kind of the Arrow After Show crew, wasn't it? Okay, let's see if I got another special island or not. Oh, Money Island! I got Money Island. This is Money Island, everybody. So here's what's special about this island. See that little island in the middle there? All those rocks, they all shoot out money when you hit them. They all just shoot out money. Instead of like clay and stone and whatever, they actually spit out money. So... I think they spit out like 15,000 each or something. So I need to go around... Oh, and it looks like there's a, uh, whatchamacallit, a fossil here. So I'll take that. And I'll kick it back over. I don't have to kick the holes back over. It's just, it's the uh, OCD in me, I guess. Oh, I need a peach. Oops. So when you eat fruit, you can actually bust the rocks. You have to eat a piece of fruit in order to get the super strength, I guess, to bust rocks. But I need to bust that one rock to get it out of my way. But I'll need to bust other rocks too, so I need to get this fruit. Okay, fruit, 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 delicious fruit. Ah, uh, peaches. I'm actually not much of a peaches guy, oddly enough. Okay, 
So now I gotta break this rock. Oh, sorry. First, I need to eat a peach. Eat one! Eat that peach. Alright. Now I will break the rock. Ooh, and there was money inside. So yeah, see, so if you hit the hit a rock with a shovel, once you've eaten a peach, you will break the rock. What do I need? I need the pole vault. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay, uh, let's see. But again, thank you, Terror Touch. I will look up that. Uh, David Green, the after show back together was great. Uh, Leech Live Reactions uh, just sends in a $2 super chat. Thank you, Leech Live Reactions. Uh, let's see. What else is here? Uh, Zach Zol... Uh, Zach Lossel writes... Uh, John, I know you hate Ahsoka, but at one point in last night's episode, I clapped and jumped out of my chair. Uh, no spit wine, keep the filthy. No spit wine, keep the filthy. I appreciate that. Listen, and you're right. I hate that character. I hate that character. But I love that other people like her. I mean, that's great. If other people like the character, I think that's awesome. Uh, I don't want people to not like something just because I don't like them. Uh, there are too many losers in fandom today that do that. That if I don't like it, so I don't want anybody to like it. No, if you like Ahsoka, that's great. But uh, it is not for me, so I don't know that I would have the same reaction that you did, uh, unfortunately. But it's good to know that it's, it was... Um, again, I saw a lot of people talking online about the episode. If it's the one I'm thinking about. And that's exciting to hear. That's exciting to hear. I don't know if I'll get around to watching that or getting that far, but we'll see. We will see. Okay, let's see here. So I'm trying to make sure... I get my back nice and level to the... Okay, so there's... Coin. 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 Money bag. Money bag. Money bag. Money bag, and I think that's everything. That's everything. Awesome. So that's 8,000 in what, one bag. 2,000 in that one. 4,000 in that one. 1,000 in that one. Then a couple of $100 coins. Very nice, very nice. And will be pleased. Okay, now I'll do that again here. Oops, no, nope, gotta get more centered. Because if you don't center yourself right, you get knocked off axis, and then if you miss the rock, you lose out on some of the money you would have gotten out of it. I still feel like I'm not quite, quite right. Oh, I'll give it a shot here. Yeah, see, I'm starting to go off axis. Ooh, I got all of them anyway, even though I went off access. Very nice. I'm very happy with that. Okay. Let's keep this rolling here. Pick up the money. Pick up the money. Here come the money. I don't know why I just got Shane McMahon's song in my head. Here come the money. Here come the money. Money, 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 money. I don't know why I don't know why Shane McMahon's song just got in my head. I have no idea. I have no explanation for that whatsoever. Okay, try this rock. Good, staying nice and centered. Is that it? That's it. Nice. Okay, 8,000. Beautiful. Okay. Alright, just keep this rolling here. Just three more rocks to get. And then I can go back to the island. I think I'm a little off. Uh, it's a little bit much. Okay, is that good? I think that's good. Yeah, because you want to get it, like, perfectly straight head on so you don't... Uh, see, I'm starting to go off to an angle. Oh, good. I stayed just enough. Just enough! Okay... Oh, no, this is the last one. Okay. I thought there was like two more, but this is the last one. All right, square up. Square up. A little off, a little off. Come on. There we go. I think. And... Two more. Last one. Got it all. Clean sweep. Got it all. Okay. Matus just wrote in. 
Uh, what did Matus write? Matus writes in, uh, to put it simply, episode 9 equals Revenge of the Sith prologue. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, because, yeah, that's what, um, that's what Heroes was writing in a little bit earlier, saying that it actually felt like it finally was starting to connect in with Revenge of the Sith. Uh, so I guess that's what he means, is that this actually probably leads, like, right into it. So let me take a guess. I'm just guessing here, okay? I'm just pure guessing here. How many rocks are there here, by the way? One, two, three, four, five. So I will eat five peaches so I can bust these things. Um, I'm going to guess... Um, I'm going to guess that the episode ends with Dooku kidnapping the Chancellor. Is that what happens? Does this end with the um, with Dooku kidnapping the Chancellor? Because that would make sense. That would that would truly be the prologue to uh, Revenge of the Sith. Because that's where Revenge of the Sith obviously picks up. Is with, you know, he's already been kidnapped and all that kind of stuff. So I'm guessing that's what they're doing. So tell me if I'm right about that. Okay. Uh, Matus is saying close. Close. Okay. Okay, it's close. All right. All right, so I'm eating five peaches because I got five rocks to break here. I'm not expecting to get anything much out of these rocks except, like, like maybe another little piece of stone. Ah, see? I missed. Like a little stone... Yeah, so, but but I need these things. These these little minerals, these things I need to pick up, these are resources that I need to build other stuff, so. Pick that up. Pick that up. Pick that up. And pick that up. All right. I got all the rocks. And I pull vault back over. Come on. Come on. There we go. Pick up another rock. I don't think there's much else here for me to do. I mean, I could chop some trees, I suppose. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Leech Live Reactions writes, I'm still so mad about sports being on hold. Oh, dude, you and me both, man. Uh, on hold. I'm a huge Colorado Avalanche fan, and they are having a great season. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I am... I like... One of the things I like to do to wrap up my day is to watch Sports Center. I like to watch sports. I'm a sports guy. Like I, I'm a movies guy first and foremost, but secondly, I'm a sports guy. And I like watching, you know, ESPN Sports. I like listening to the uh, Pardon the Interruption. I mean, some of my favorite shows are ESPN shows, and there's nothing. I mean, they're literally on Sports Center right now talking about, you know, NASCAR drivers playing NASCAR video games. I mean, that's what that's what they've been reduced to on ESPN right now. Uh, is doing that kind of stuff. So it's like, come on. Come on. Give me something. I am dying for sports to come back. So that's part of the reason why I was so heartbroken that UFC, um, the UFC got canceled. Like, not just because I wanted to see Tony Ferguson and Khabib uh, Nurmagomedov fight, because I've been waiting for years to see that fight, but because finally a sporting event. And I didn't care. I didn't care that there wasn't going to be an audience, and I didn't care if it was going to be on some remote desert island. I didn't care. I just wanted to see the fight. I just want to have some sports, damn it. Is that too much to ask? I mean, oh, so yeah, listen, listen, you and me both, buddy. You and me both, Le Leash Live. I am seriously missing my sports. I am seriously missing my sports right now. Um, all right, hold on a second here. Uh, Mike T5 writes, or sorry, Mike T54 writes, uh, you are wrong. Guess you'll have to watch Clone Wars and find out. Also, John, I see in uh, I see in even Animal Crossing your social distancing. How was your week? Uh, my week was good. Yeah, I because here's the thing. I am not in the game to the only thing I do with this game. Because remember, this is Anne's character. The only thing I'm here to do is to do Anne's grunt work. So you know, I might as well take these. Uh, these are worth some money, so I might as well. Shake the uh, shake the trees and pick these up. These aren't worth a lot, but they're worth something. The coconuts, they're worth something. So I might as well shake the trees and get them out. Um, I, I'm not really here to do anything except to do the grunt work for Anne. I do Anne's grunt work by going around, collecting resources, um, you know, maybe build things that are for sale, all that kind of stuff. I'm simply here on Anne's island, on Anne's behalf. Ooh, what kind of fish is that? That's a big one. I'm just gonna try fishing that that one. Let's see if I can, I, it might be too far though. Oh, it turned around. 
No, it's too far away. It is a big... That's a big one, though. Should I try? Let's see, can I get it? Ah, oh, jeez, he turns around. Let me see if I can get it on his radar. No, he's not interested. I'd have to pole vault. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to try. It's probably a total waste of my time. Uh, but I'm going to try. Um, so that's why you're not seeing... Anyway, uh, Mike, that's why you're not seeing me engaging with Anne's uh, uh, other island mates. Uh, because I just... It's not what I'm here to do. I'm just here to make the money. But my week has been good. I've had a pretty damn good week, actually. Uh, all things considered. The fact that we're all uh, stuck in this uh, stupid quarantine nonsense, but hey, it is what we got to do. We got to, we got to do these things to make sure we can get it behind us as fast as possible. Ah, this fucking fish! <laughs> Campy's getting angry at the digital characters again. Yeah, I am. Stupid freaking fish! Hold still, you stupid but. Counting to three. See, I want to be careful because I want that big fish. I don't want that small one that's beside it. So I got to be careful. I want to get the big fish's attention, not the little fish's attention. Try this. Okay, that should... Yes! Please be worth something. Ooh! A koi! These are actually worth something. All right, so it was worth it. It was worth coming over here to get that damn fish. Oh, and my fishing rod broke, so no more fishing for me. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to make another fishing rod. Okay, so I need the pole vault again. Vaulting pole, so I can get over there and fly back to my island. All right, so thanks for asking, Mike. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see, Mike T54 also writes, If you had to pick to have one back right now, would you pick movies and theaters or having sports? Also, if you could watch any sport right now, which would it be? If I oh, I'm, that's easy. The, movies and theaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I if I got to pick one right now, uh, I would love to have sports back. I would love to have sports back. But if if it's a choice about either having sports back right now or having movies and movie theaters back, totally movies and movie theaters. Easily. That's that's without question, without hesitation, that's what it would be. If there was any one sport I could watch right now, it would be UFC. You guys know I'm an MMA guy. I, I, it just So yeah, UFC is what I would desperately love to watch right now. Uh, if not that, then some NFL football. But it's not NFL season right now anyway, so we wouldn't be getting it even if it wasn't for the crap that we're going through right now. I'm ready to go home. Yeah, so if, even if it wasn't for the crop right now, we wouldn't be having NFL football right now anyway. So that just makes the decision even easier. That yes, I would want, I would want UFC, man. I would, I want UFC. I want UFC back so bad. Um, it's yes, it is difficult for me to put into words how much I really want UFC back. Very, very, very much. Um, by the way. Uh, and channels right did the UFC fight out in the ocean get shut down it did ESPN got a hold of Dana White and said shut it down so they and ESPN is his broadcasting partner so he had no choice uh, Dana White tried he he tried to lease a private island like a death fight private island um, to have this tournament on there and uh, and he was getting close they were he said he was gonna make it happen but then, unfortunately, ESPN stepped down. He said the head of ESPN and Disney. So I think Bob Iger actually called him. He said the highest level of Disney and ESPN called him and told him to shut it down. So I got a feeling it was the head of ESPN and Bob Iger, I believe. I don't know for sure. He didn't say the words Bob Iger, but I believe Bob Iger probably got a hold of him and, uh, and told him to shut it down. Told him to shut down. All right. Next up, Dan Ketchum writes, San Diego Comic-Con is canceled. Yeah, it's no surprise. Like about a month ago, I thought it was possible that San Diego Comic-Con could still happen. Not likely, but possible. The problem is, as the more days that passed and the more weeks that passed and the closer we were getting to July, it was becoming apparent that they weren't going to be able to make it happen. It's just too much of a logistical nightmare. Um, so, yeah. 
Comic-Con got canceled. That sucks. This is going to be the first year in a long time that I'm not going to Comic-Con. You know what's funny? Ann and I were talking today, and Ann and I might actually go to San Diego on the weekend of when Comic-Con was supposed to be. Uh, we may actually go to San Diego that weekend anyway and just rent a house that we... we there's this one big house that we like to rent every year. Maybe rent that house and just spend the weekend there and spend the weekend in San Diego. Maybe get a couple friends together, go out to San Diego with us, and, you know, just uh, just hang out there as if Comic-Con was going on. Or you know what? Maybe I'll put on my own con that weekend. I'll put on Campia Con. Here we go. Hold on a second. Let me do this right now. I'm going to put this in the chat. Okay, ready? Hashtag Campia Con. There we go. Get that trending. I'm going to do Campia Con this year. It'll be a, an all-digital convention where it'll be all John Campia all weekend. Campia Con is going to be the biggest event, biggest event of all time. Everybody can come virtually and hang out and be a part of Campia Con. How good is that? Doesn't that sound good? Campia Con, Brad, Brad Gray's got the idea. Campia Con 2020. You're damn right. Campia Con 2020. But yeah, I was really bummed out. Again, not surprised. But bummed out nonetheless to find out that Comic-Con was shut down. Because I was unofficially... I don't know that I was going to have my documentary done in time anyway. I was unofficially aiming to have a cut of my documentary done by Comic-Con. Not the final cut, but at least a cut of the documentary done. And I was hoping to debut it at Comic-Con this year. Um... And uh, I'm obviously not going to be able to do that now. So, yeah, very disappointed. But, again, I understand. I get it. It's it's the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do. But it uh, would have been fun. Would have been fun. Okay, let me get this fossil assessed here. Um, oh, there it is. The fossil. Assess this fossil, please. <laughs> A diplo chest, superb, indeed splendid, a rare fossil we do not yet have in our collection. All right, Anne would want me to donate it. I'm donating it. Uh, you know, I should probably let him give me a presentation. Okay, so I'm just going to fly through this. Do, 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 do. Oh my god, this is so boring. Uh, I feel my poop getting hard. This is so boring. No, I'm done. I gave you your stupid dinosaur fossil. Now let me get out of here. Okay, good. So Anne will be happy. I donated a thing, so that's good too. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Tater Tots writes... It's like Matrix and John Wick had a baby. I just ran over three dudes on top of a barrel while shooting them with SMGs in slow motion. This game is glorious. Oh, you're talking about... What was the name of the game you were talking about? Uh, tater Tots, Tater Tots, Tater Tots. Where's Tater Tots? Uh, my friend Pedro. Okay, let me try this again here. Um... It's like Matrix and John Wick. <laughs> My friend Prado, the, the side scroll for that. Okay, Tater Tots, I'm sold. You got me. I'm sold. I'm gonna I'm gonna look for this game. My friend Pedro. I'm gonna look for this game and I'm gonna try it out tonight. I'm gonna look for it and I'm gonna try it out tonight. Alright, uh, let's see here. Ben Rayner writes, Campion 2020, cool. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be the greatest convention. It'll be better than the Fire Festival. It'll be better than Fire Festival. John, you really shouldn't be comparing it to Fire Festival. I don't care. I'm going to compare it to Fire Festival. It's going to be the greatest thing ever. All right. Mike T. <clears throat> I'll say I'm going to get Anne back to her house here. So I think I've now done everything I set out to do. <coughs> I think I've done everything I've set out to do. Um, I think... Yes, I gotta cross this bridge. Oh, shit! The tarantula! The tarantula is the most expensive
Okay, see how it's standing up? You gotta stop moving when it stands up. But I gotta get around this fence. How do I get at it? it Where'd that damn tarantula go? I can't see it. It was right here. Where did it go? Gotta walk very slowly. Because if the tarantula bites you, you die. Where'd it go? <laughs> oh, it was springing to kill me. Oh, that's the first time I've caught a tarantula. John, why are you getting so excited? It's the first time I caught a tarantula. All right, give me a break. Give me a break. I'm excited that I caught a tarantula. Okay, sue me. Okay, sorry. Uh, Mike T54 uh, writes, uh, By the way, John, I need... Uh, you to cut a promo for me regarding the dumb people in my state, Ohio and Michigan, that are protesting to end shutdowns and saying governors are dictators. LOL. Campion, uh, Campion 2020. Hashtag bring the filthy. Listen, look, I, I don't like to get political on my YouTube channel because on my YouTube channel, like, of course, I have my own political beliefs. You have your political beliefs. That's fine. But you know what? On my channel, doesn't matter what your political background is. We're all movie fans together, right? We're all movie fans. That's the important thing. So I try to leave uh, politics um, out of um, the discussion and the discourse here on this channel. But there are certain things that I don't believe are political issues. There are certain things that just aren't political issues. There are certain things that are just common sense issues and dumb fucking moron issues. All right? There's just some issues that are not politics. It's not politics. It's just, are you a remotely intelligent human being or are you a stupid dumb fuck? And oh no, oh no, the switch turned off. I don't know what happened. Did I do that? Or did the switch just run out of battery? Oh, you know what? I know what happened. The switch ran out of power. No, it couldn't have run out of power. It did. It ran out of power. It ran out of power. Oh, nuts. Sorry about that, guys. I'm sorry about that. I was... Uh, oh, I did... I, I guess... Oh, hold on a second. Echo, 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 echo. That fisk is that. I guess what happens is, even with the power plugged in, it will drain slowly. It will drain slowly. Um, and I, this thing was almost dead. I guess it was only about half powered when I started. Oh, so I can't, I was, ah, it's all right. I was wrapping up anyway. I was wrapping up anyway. Uh, but just to finish off, uh, Mike, what you were talking about there. Uh, <laughs> Emerald A. Archer saying, John Campy, you have failed to power the switch. Yes, I did. But at least we got to almost the end. We got to, all I was going to do now was uh, go in and... Um, and uh, turn in the tarantula. That's all I was going to do anyway. But anyway, I'll just finish with this thing. Where do, where do these inbred, moronic, uneducated, selfish, self-centered, dumb as fuck creatures come from? Where do they come from? And, and believe me, I say that not as a political thing, because I know a lot of people who are politically right and politically left who are both looking at this gaggle of idiots going, what the fuck? Like, I know people on the right and the left who are both looking at this gaggle of idiots and going, what the fuck? And it's like, thank you, morons, while the rest of us are trying to be smart and do the things we need to do to get this thing behind us as fast as we can. Thank you for making this drag out longer. Now you're going to make this drag out longer and you're going to make it worse. Uh, anyway, 
just gets me frustrated. Again, I don't see that as a political issue. That is just a common sense issue that people on the left with common sense and people on the right on common sense all agree on. Uh, it is, it's a frustrating, frustrating thing. But anyway, that's, that's just me. Anyway, guys, uh, that'll do it for me for tonight. Um, I, uh, I am all wrapped up here. Uh, of course the, the switch dying on me certainly contributed to that. So anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out with me here guys for the last couple of hours doing this thing. And thanks for Anne for coming in and joining along and thank you guys for being here. This was, this was fun. I'm really, I, I actually, it's a chill game. That's one of the great things about animal crossing for playing chats. It's just such a chill, relaxed game that it makes it very easy to converse while I'm playing, unlike say, because I tried doing Unreal Tournament, uh, but the thing is, when you're playing Unreal Tournament, like you can't talk, like you're just zoned in on what you're doing. But with Animal Crossing or, or games like that, or like Warcraft, for ex example, uh, you can do that. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot for being here, guys. We will be doing a um, uh, a uh, open mic tomorrow morning on Saturday. Uh, we'll be doing our regular open mic on Saturday. So maybe some of you guys will come on by and join us for that as well. Uh, until then, guys, thanks a lot for being here. Remember, guys, do the four things. Stay smart. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of the people around you. And uh, that's all we can really do. So thank you so much, guys, for being here. My name is John Campion. Until next time, my friends, CampiaCon 2020.